Um, so for your purposes, do you, is there anything in particular that um, would help? Like what's the starting point that we can help you out with? So, uh, so the Zano thing seems really awesome. Like I was screwing with that yesterday and just having that as like the main like data store, like, and being able to kind of run those API calls and pull in like the different API. Cause it's basically, I have like one of the scrapers is an Appify. So it's super easy. There's like a couple in rapid API is super easy. Like I kind of understand how to pull the APIs and sort of manipulate the data a bit in there. Um, and, and so pulling that data for, like from Xano, using Xano as that main data store and actually pulling that into Builder yep. and displaying it, I guess is like really the first, like you said, that that's the first hurdle essentially. And then it seems like after that, it, it, it would get easier and easier essentially. So yeah, that's kind of, I guess, where I'm at yep. right now is sort of pulling in from an API that I built in, in Xano um, that's sort of doing its thing. You know what I mean? Perfect. And Drew, do you happen to have already like in somewhere already set up with, because I don't have a, a Zeno backend already set up. Somewhere. I actually don't. Have Dorian it. might Brand from the, from the um, original actions, but I don't, I don't actually have anything set up. Yeah, you, yeah. Zeno I, actions, the specific ones, because you don't have to do a manual API call for Zeno. They, we do have those actions. Yeah. yeah. I noticed yeah. that. I mean, I could just show it generically too, and probably talk through the high level without actually having. Yeah, that would be fine, man. Just, just anything like just generic. I mean, I think honestly, like just to see a little bit, because I, you know, I was yeah. fucking with it. I'm just kind of like, it, it's a little bit heavy on the front end for me right now. I'm not sort of like, whoa, how do I, how do I get that data in there? And like, what's the, the step by step, you know? No worries. We can, we can sort of do, so Builder handles data. We don't really care if it's API data or if it's data collections from Builder or what we're like manually entered on the screen kind of data. Uh, yeah. we, we basically treat all of it. We assume it's going to be a JSON array, which is like 99% yeah. of all API responses. Um, so what, what we have is this element called a grid element. And that grid element displays a page for however many records there are in your JSON array. So when you do this API called Xano, it comes back and there's three records, you're gonna get three rows in the grid and each row is displayed using a page. So why don't I do this? I'll create a real quick system of just like homepage and a list row, display it on the screen. Um, and then I'll show the differences between like builder data collection data binding or using an action to set that data into the grid. And we can That'll just be awesome. in there. So let's do, um, we'll start off with just the, we'll just throw a heading on here. Um, and let's call it you know, my list of things. And then let's put a grid on here. So there's this element called a grid list. So we'll just drop Mark, that in. So, yeah. I just sent you uh, an API endpoint that you can use just oh. for like Perfect. one of my little SANL tests. That way you can just pull it from there and, and set it directly into that grid. Perfect, perfect. And can you chat me the names of the the field so I can bind it properly without having to go look up what they are? Yeah, there's uh yeah, I'll chat them. Cool. Um, okay, so I've got this grid, and what I'm gonna do is add a second page because the grid needs a page to render inside of there, and the row page by default is empty. You gotta select it. So um, I'll actually just create a little blank page over here, and we're gonna put some text boxes on here. Keep it really simple. We're going to go um, field one, and then we'll have another one for field two. And we'll just end up mapping just two of the fields. I don't know how many are going to be in that data set, but it's the same process for however many you have. Um, and then back over here on my list of things, we're going to bind that new page as the grid row. So now, uh, by default, it's just showing three representations of that in there. So maybe I'll style this just a little bit so we can kind of see a little cleaner. I'm going to put a container on there and we'll put, didn't drop it. There we go. And then in the div, I'm just going to do a little bit of styling here. And go to 10 pixels there, do background color and just pick a color here. Maybe something like that. Doesn't really matter. I just want to be able to show that these are different things. 
and then margin we'll put a little bit of margin on here of like 20 pixels of margin around it so now we can see there's like three records there um, so I'll actually skip the data collection part for real, but effectively, if you're using builder data collections, you just go data collection list, select the table, and then you bind on the fields here, you do a field binding from field. And so each record comes in there and then it's bound for each field is going to show and display in that. It's a very similar process for uh, using any API action. The difference is instead of using a data binding, you're going to use an action to go get the data and set it in there. So on my home page, we'll go to flows and I can use the pre-existing action, I'm uh, sorry, pre-existing flow of page binding if I'd like to, or I can create a new one called like set Xano data. I'll use the pre-existing one. So by default, whenever your page first loads, it's gonna run page load. And inside of there by default, it nests the page binding action. And I'm gonna delete these that we had created earlier because I want to do something crazy. Um, so in here, I can add an action. One of them, I could just use an API call and go get any API data that I want. That's one way I can do it. Um, another way I can do it is to use the Xano API calls. So if I just type Xano in here, we'll get those three. So I'm going to use this one called API endpoint get. So this one, uh, what we're going to do is just put in what the URL is. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Dorian, but this returns all fields by default? It does, yeah. Okay, so it's just gonna bring all the fields back in. And one sec, I'm gonna stop showing my screen and go grab that information and paste it in here real quick. Let's yeah, and really on the on the get for that really depends on your setup on the on Xeno's endpoint because you specify what fields you're requesting, what you're gonna get. Yeah. Gotcha. So the endpoint here called to do in this case. Okay, so I'll just do task and completed. And just so you guys know, I have a meeting scheduled, or I'm about to schedule a meeting with Xano for them to do a tutorial on Builder by Xano. Awesome. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. So all I did here was um, pasted my URL from Xano. And so it looks like Dorian created this endpoint called to do. Um, you can pretty much leave everything else alone. What it's going to do is set the response into a variable and you can target what page you want that variable on, or I can take that response and go into an element and go straight into my grid list. Oh, so okay. The response here, and Dorian, correct me if I'm wrong, because I haven't actually used Xano's APIs personally. So I believe what that's going to do is there will be a response that is a JSON array and that array gets set into the grid and then each record that's in there will just automatically display as a row inside of it. Exactly. Yep. Now in Xano, we also set up, there's some fields in Xano uh, and the way we're going to map those fields to these is by going to the data section on one of the elements that you want to map and in the record value tab, go from variable because what happens is when it sets that JSON array into the grid, every record becomes a row and inside of each row, we set a variable for each property of the record, which is the fields. Um, and I believe it just uses the names yeah. from Xano and correct me, Dorian, task is one of them and completed is one of them. Is yeah. right? Okay, cool. So this first one is gonna be the task so I'll probably change this label to task. And then whatever the value is from the task in that record is gonna show up now in this field or in this text box. And then this one we'll call completed. And I'm gonna do the same thing from variable completed. Okay, so now again, that process, when we preview this on page load, it's gonna go run the API call because I put that action inside the page binding. And then that API call gets the data, sets it into here. Each row loads like this, and each of these is gonna be mapped now to the, the correct value from uh, Xano response. So let's just go preview, choose home, because it's the first time I've done it. And that should just go out and do its thing. All right, so that's it. So we have test two and test five and false, and looks like there's five records in there. Um, yeah. 
And so if I were to change the mapping, like the, this was completed, right, for this true false. Um, so one way I could do that. What's another uh, value in there, Dorian? What's another one? Uh, you can drop an image. One of them has an image. Perfect. So let's go with, so I'm going to put an image in here as well. And let's, I'm going to change, I'm going to just make the width like uh, 200 pixels or something. So it's not enormous. Um, go to the data of the image from variable and image. Yep. Makes sense. And notice it, it updated here, but because we haven't rerun the API call, it doesn't have the data yet. So I'm going to refresh and that will rerun the API call. Right. Oh, well, looks like the data doesn't have proper images in it or something there, but oh, you can okay. see it tried, yeah. it tried to set an image here, but it looks like it's an invalid image at this point. But basically that's it. You can use any of the types. So for instance, if you wanted to make this an interactive UI and go back and forth, one thing you might do is like, I'm going to put a checkbox here instead and we'll delete this one. And for the checkbox, I'm going to go data from variable completed. Mm. Okay. And so now, and let me drop this guy on here. Huh. Oh, it's it's in order. I thought it was out of order. I was like, well, why is it out of order? But it's not. It's because it's mm -hmm. inline block there. Um, so now if we go back here and refresh again, well, maybe. Oh, no, it is. It's just they're false and true. <laughs> they're just false. So, and you can barely see it because- yeah, I was going to say, they have weird styles on them by default yeah. that doesn't show a checkbox. <laughs> yeah, we need to actually- <laughs> they are checked and unchecked. You can you can see the small difference between gray and white. There we go. There you so go. Are checked and those two are not, those three are not. So what you could do from here is you can now use other API actions on change. So when you check this box, you want to go update that record. So that would go a little further. You would have an event on change of that, and we would go update Xano record. And then you would need to create an action. I haven't actually done any of this stuff. So you would do post and the same thing. You have an endpoint. And then in your body, it would be completed. And that would come from an element value from the checkbox. So now when you check that on change of the checkbox, it's going to go send that data back out to Xano. And so that's how you're going to do this back and forth. Um, I think that's that's how it would work. There might be something else for like the ID to match it up. I'm not exactly sure how. Yeah, to... and the URL, you would just change that to a concatenate and paste okay. that same URL. Okay. And then slash and then grab the ID from the current variable. Gotcha. Okay, cool. So what, what we're doing here is the way that Xano works is they have that same endpoint URL and then a slash. So I put a slash afterward. And then after the slash, you need to use the ID. And I believe it's literally just ID. Yeah, all lower case. So because in this row, we have the variable called ID that came from Xano in the first place, I'm gonna change this to from variable on the current page called ID. So now what it's gonna do is concatenate, string that together, endpoint slash ID, and it's going to update completed with the value that's in checkbox. And I have no idea if you actually have that endpoint set up or not. I do. <laughs> you do? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So let me refresh here. Let's see if we let's see if it actually just works here. Um, if, so if I check this box and then refresh again. Yep, it worked. I see. So now there's three of them that are checked and two that are not, right? Yeah, there is one thing with Xano, though. Notice how it lost the value in the test. Uh you yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. they require you to send everything or Resend you can create fields. separate endpoints for every field if you're trying to. So if you don't map the task, like I didn't map the task there. And it's because I didn't map the task, it sent over a, an empty value is how it didn't send anything over. And Xano treats that as I'm wanting to wipe out that part of the record. Mm -hmm. so you have to actually send every single piece or what Dorian was saying is you can make a new endpoint called slash to do slash completed or something like that. And that one only accepts the completed mm -hmm. input and doesn't, and doesn't do anything to anything else. Right. So you, you have to go configure the Xano side, however it needs to be configured. Right. Damn. 
<laughs> is that a good starting point for that's you? That's super, that was super helpful. Yeah, that was incredibly helpful, actually. So yeah. Um, yeah, and it kind of gave me a little preview into like that counting the exports and count, you know, they're selecting the records and adding them mm -hmm. to another database that's a list that's generated exactly. in there. Yeah. So okay, yeah. Okay, that was awesome, man. Thank you so much. Awesome, yeah, no awesome. worries.